Hello. The first two lectures have described different types of earthquakes and the resulting seismic waves. In this lecture, we will discuss some of the basic seismological and engineering terms that are used to define the size of the earthquake and how they are used for engineering purposes. We will consider how we measure the size of an earthquake. There are two principal ways to measure the size of an earthquake. These are known as intensity and magnitude. Intensity and magnitude measure different characteristics of an earthquake. When an earthquake occurs, waves radiate from the source to the ground surface. Intensity measures the consequence of the shaking produced by the earthquake at a certain location and is determined from the effects on people, structures and the natural environment. For example, feeling the ground shaking, ornaments falling over, buildings cracking, or the electricity not working. Normally, the further away from the epicentre, the lower the intensity. There are different intensity scales. Modified Macaulay, MM, Medvedev Sponhauser Karnik, MSK, and the European Macroseismic Scale, EMS, to name but three. The intensity is a number written as a Roman numeral, normally on a 12-point scale and provides a qualitative measure of the earthquake size. Following an earthquake, often maps of intensity measurements are developed. An example of the 1992 Roman earthquake is pictured. This shows the area over which the earthquake was felt by all, intensity 4, and damage to buildings, intensity 6. However, intensity is not always a reliable measure. If you consider two earthquakes of similar magnitude, one in a less economically developed country with a poorer quality of buildings, it is likely the observed intensity will be higher compared to the highly developed country because of the better quality buildings. The magnitude is a measure of the amount of energy released during the earthquake. The energy is released in the form of shock waves. These waves are recorded by seismometers around the world and are the basis for calculating the earthquake's magnitude. The concept of magnitude was developed in 1935 in California by Charles Richter as a mathematical device to compare the size of earthquakes and is therefore known as the Richter scale. The magnitude of an earthquake is determined from the logarithm of the recorded amplitude of the waves. Seismologists now use the moment magnitude scale in preference to the Richter scale. Because of the logarithmic basis of the scale, each whole number increase in magnitude represents a tenfold increase in the measured amplitude. In terms of energy, each of the whole number step is a mag in the magnitude scale corresponds to a release of about 32 times more energy than the amount associated with the preceding whole number value. For instance, the Hertzinger earthquake in 2012 had a magnitude of 3.6. This is about 900 times less energy than the Roman earthquake in 1992, which had a magnitude of 5.8. The next key parameter to consider is peak ground acceleration. This is often referred to as PGA and is equal to the maximum ground acceleration that has occurred during an earthquake shaking at a specific location. As shown in the graphic, PGA is equal to the amplitude of the largest absolute acceleration recorded on an accelerogram during an earthquake. It is one instant in time in the overall earthquake record. Unlike the Richter and moment magnitude scales, it is not a measure of the total energy, magnitude or size of an earthquake, but rather a measure of how violently the Earth shakes at a given geographic point. The PGA is most commonly used in seismic building codes such as Eurocode 8 and is often plotted on seismic hazard maps. A seismic hazard is the probability that an earthquake will occur in a given geographic area within a given window of time and with, a ground, motion in, and with ground motion intensity exceeding a given threshold. Recently, the SHARE project developed a seismic hazard map to harmonise the seismic hazard across Europe, as shown in the image. PGA is a simple design parameter, since it can be used to derive the horizontal force due to an earthquake, considering Newton's second law of motion. 
where force equals mass times acceleration. One important aspect of assessing the measured ground motion at a particular site is the effect of soft soils amplifying ground motions. If we consider the Earth's crust as a table and a bowl of jelly as the soil, you'll notice that if you hit the table, the surface of the jelly moves much more than the table itself. This is an effect known as site response and has in extreme situations increased ground motion significantly. The 1985 Mexico City earthquake was a prime example of this effect when the soft so soil uh, lake deposits under the city led to the amplification of ground motions and the collapse of many, many buildings. A seismic hazard map has been derived for the Groningen region. This accounts for our understanding of the geological structure within the reservoir and the compaction rate. It also considers the soft soil deposits. This can be used directly in the assessment of existing buildings and the design of new buildings. So, in this lecture we have described some of the key terms that define the size of an earthquake, intensity, magnitude and peak ground acceleration. We have also looked at the importance of soft soils amplifying earthquake ground motions. Thank you. The next lecture will be an introduction to geotechnical engineering.